Hey guys, Nate Tice here from the Athletic Football Show, back again with another edition of Wind the Clock. This week, we're going to look at how the Detroit Lions hit a 335-pound man in plain sight to get a key first down in a four-minute situation and ultimately a field goal to help ice the game against the Vikings. So let's see how the Lions use their earlier jumbo personnel tendencies to get this first down and let Penny Sewell fly. Anyone that's watched this web series or heard me on the Athletic Football Show podcast has heard me talk about how the NFL is extremely situational. Every coaching staff puts together their game plans with a little subsets on their menus, you know, for second and long, maybe an appetizer on third down, short yardage, red zone, two minute. Well, four minute is one of those situations that teams consider when they put together their game plan. And what four minute is, is when the offense is protecting the lead and trying to burn the clock. So you, a lot of runs, maybe their best run formation, their best run personnel group, their best run plays, safe runs, you know, not a lot of action or movement, maybe, maybe a gadget to, you know, take advantage of what the defense knows. The defense knows the offense is trying to burn the clock here. So they get into their own run stopping looks. Um, every team is different though. Personnel groupings, what they, what they base out of, do they bring a lot of blitzes? Do they mug everyone up on the line of scrimmage? Do they run quarters? There's a million variables that go into these situations. Well, one of these situations came up in the Lions and the Vikings game on Sunday. And the Lions got the ball with an eight-point lead and 249 on the clock. So under four minutes. So this is a true four-minute situation. The Vikings have two timeouts here. So the Lions are trying to gain at least one first down milk those, those timeouts get the clock going if they can get two first downs it'd be ultimately the key here so on the first play of this four minute series the lions come out in 11 jumbo personnel and what 11 jumbo is is three wide receivers one running back and the one tight end is a six offensive lineman that's the jumbo designate designator so the lions who use a good amount of jumbo they'll do 12 jumbo they'll do 21 jumbo um, when they do it is you, they use a six offensive lineman. They are top 10 in the NFL as far as percentage of plays that feature a six offensive alignment. They have, they go deep. <laughs> they got some really good players. They got Jonah Jackson, Frank Ragnow, and they got this guy, Penny Sewell, who's an absolute star in his second season at right tackle. And usually they used other offensive linemen as this jumbo guy, but against the Vikings here, they use Penny Sewell as the six offensive lineman. So in the first play, they come out first and 10, and Penny Sewell reports is eligible. They're in 11 personnel. The Vikings counter with their 3-4 base defense. So even though there's three wide receivers on the field, they're saying, that is a six offensive lineman. We are in four minute. You guys are going to try to pound the rock on us. So we're playing heavy on the run. The Lions not only have Penny Sewell on the field, they motion him across, run a run play, goes for a one-yard game. Gets kind of blown up, actually, by Zadarius Smith and Eric Hendricks. So, okay, that happens. Clock is ticking. Clock tick, tick, tick. They still got to run one more play before a two-minute warning. Second play comes up. There's still an 11 jumbo uh, personnel with Penny Sewell as a six, six offensive lineman, the tight end. And on that play, different formation. Run another run play. Gets stuffed. Goes for about two yards. So it's third and seven. Hits the two-minute warning. And something about two-minute warnings is that teams and coaches will really, you know, be alert for something you know if you're a defense or an offense you know be alert for a blitz be alert for a shot play be alert for a gadget play you know flea flickers big big stuff here so if i were coming out of a two minute warning as a defense i would maybe really think that the this opposing team is gonna be chucking the ball they're gonna be maybe doing something on a third and seven but the lions come out again in 11 jumbo personnel and again they show the same formation they show on the first play of this series so this is the, these are the only three plays that they're in 11 jumbo this entire game. Now on this formation, you have, it's, it's condensed. I would call this a condensed two by two formation. You got two guys here, two guys here. Remember Sewell, even though he's wearing 58 is eligible. He reports as eligible, even on the first play on the film, you can see the ref giving the signal. He's like pointing, he's like, I, he's like, oh shit, I gotta get this in right before this ball is snapped. And that first play, it was flipped. So Sewell was over here and he motioned across to a two receiver side and they ran the run play he kind of overshot the kick out block and you know it wasn't wasn't pretty i think he had another play on his mind that the lions might have been practicing throughout this week so it's the same formation it's just flipped because they're on the different hash they're on the left hash here and so everything is screaming run 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 the vikings as you see there's three defense alignment here two Outside linebackers here, two very good ones, Daniel Hunter and Zadaria Smith. You got Jordan Hicks, you got Eric Hendricks there, and a 3-4 quarter shell. 
<laughs> it's kind of, this place is really funny. It's it's amazing. Ben Azul is it's like he's an incredible athlete. Like I I'd vote him either I'd probably vote him for first, maybe second team all pro at, at this point in time. Him and Lane Johnson at right tackle. Uh, but he's playing amongst the best offensive line play of any position along the line in the entire league. And he's 22 years old. Pretty ridiculous. But anyways, this is about him as Penny Sewell, the receiver. So on this formation, they motion Sewell across, just like on the first play on the run. But instead of kicking out 99 here, uh, Daniel Hunter, he releases to the flat. What the lines are running here is power pass. So it's a protection and it's an action by the quarterback and the running back. And you see this a lot um, in short yardage. This is what Spider 2 is and Spider 2 Y Banana is this type of protection. Um, usually you do with a fullback that's right here and he's kicking out. But as you can see, Sewell is still off ball. So even though he's a tight end motioning across, that kind of is at the same spot, him being here and him being here, you know, splitting hairs. I mean, not really, but really. <laughs> so they're running power pass. And what that is, it's going to have a run action. The quarterback is going to do a little one, two, three, four, five flash fake to the running back. The running back's job is to cut off the outside linebacker or the end man on the line of scrimmage. You'll see in playbooks, E-M-O-L. And what he is doing there is cutting them off the offensive line has kind of a safer protection. It's a power pass as they slide down. So they it's really a six-man slide protection. Really, it's five-man, the five offensive linemen, the running back cutting off the D end. So the ball is scout quick. You know the running back is on a D end. <laughs> but on this play, because of that action and because of what the Vikings are expecting, Daniel Hunter plays Sewell like it's split zone. Like he's like, okay, I got it. Or he's lead blocking on him. He's like, I got to keep my leverage here. And he kind of gives the shoulder, and Sewell is such a good athlete, he just sprints right by him. I mean, he is he is a bat out of hell on <laughs> this play. He's hauling so much ass. And on this, he gets into the flat. There is nobody out there for him. On the power pass, typically you see crossing concepts like this. So you have the play fake, you get the linebackers kind of all, you know, their eyes are up. And on this play, their eyes do come up. So Kendricks and Jordan Hicks are like, oh, no, this is run. Third and seven, they're trying to milk the clock. They're trying to, we have two timeouts. They want us to burn one. They come up just even one or two steps, but it's enough. And really, on this coverage, Peterson is on Amara Say Brown here. The safety comes down. He is on DJ Chark. DJ Chark actually does a really good job, kind of like hesitating, like he's blocking or stumbling and then releasing. He's the weak to the opposite side. He is the the the, the check down essentially on this play, the bailout throw on this play. If Sewell didn't come wide open. So you have Chark on that crosser. You have Josh Reynolds kind of, he's over the top. If you have thought, have you ever seen a mesh play? Kind of the same thing, you know, two crossers with a dig, St. Brown working back or working over the top. So that creates the high low. And as a quarterback, what you're reading is typically one to two. And I guess that would be three for them. Uh, but really you're, this is all or nothing, especially in this type of situation. Again, you would have a D end on a running back. You really don't want to get past three on this play and really it looks like they only have two uh st brown's routes kind of muddled so i'm not really sure um but what really gets the defense here is peterson like i said is on st brown this corner is on reynolds okay the safety is on chark okay they don't sewell is an eligible receiver remember before the play he has to go hey i'm eligible to the refs and the refs go 58 report it to everybody mike comes on everything everyone can hear it in the dome at ford field and what happens is when this motion happens, Patrick Pearson actually kind of points. He's like, hey, hey, you see this? And everyone's like, yep. So this safety starts kind of like walking and then he realizes, oh crap, and starts sprinting. But it's a little too little too late. Sewell makes a great catch on this. Jared Goff gets it out there into the flat, gets it around Daniel Hunter, who's kind of like in no man's land. And it like, adjusts to the ball, turns, gets north and then lunges like just a freedom lunge that was just unbelievable uh, 10 out of 10 no notes and he gets the first down i mean everyone's fired up you can tell they practice this play um you can see kevin o'connell trying to march him down burn the timeout so it gets this huge first down and it forces now fresh set of downs for the lions they are now at the vikings 32 that is more reasonable field goal range you know, that is, uh, you know, 49, 50 yarder. That is much more reasonable, even if you only don't get this first down, which, spoilers, the Lions don't. They don't only get a couple yards uh, and I have to kick a field goal from the 30 and, you know, their kicker makes it. So they end up getting the win. 
Uh, but it is an ice the game. You know, 17 seconds is when the Vikings get the ball. So even if they miss the field goal, you know, 17 seconds at the 30 or at the 37. Okay. You know, going against Kirk Cousins, you never know. <laughs> but it was just a really good play call and play design. Uh, uh, a play off of something they already shown earlier in this series and just a willingness to try something. Even though it's third and seven, you know, you don't usually see power pass on third and seven. It's a red zone play or a short yardage play. And, you know, so seeing that to this play, uh, using Penny Sewell, using kind of like the defense's own prior notions about this play, about the tendencies, is it was just really creative stuff. Using heavy personnel to get to some creative creativity in a key moment and get this first down. They ended up not icing the game, but they got the field goal, which then iced the game, made it a two-score game. The Lions have a ton of talented offensive linemen, and they know how to use them as run blockers, pass protectors, and apparently as pass catchers too. And Penny Sewell is one of those talented offensive linemen. He is 22 years old and legitimately playing at an all-pro level as a blocker. But this catch was a fantastic display of his athleticism. He's 335 pounds, probably 340 doing this stuff. And it was just awesome. It was a tremendous design from the Lions coaching staff led by offensive coordinator Ben Johnson, offensive line coach Hank Fraley, and probably Dan Campbell has his fingerprints all over this offense too. But this is why the Lions are still in the playoff hunt. It's because of just using their players in fun, creative ways, but very sound ways as well. And just a little dash of creativity in these big moments. And I'm excited to see what else they can put together as they kind of try and keep it, keep the fight going towards the playoffs. This was another edition of Wind the Clock. My name is Nate Tice. For more content like this, more Wind the Clock episodes, episodes of the Athletic Football Show, please check out our YouTube channel. Please subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.